And you'll be behind me like a queen. Oh, no I just don't find it. On a plastic chair, yeah. No, plastic. I, feel like I feel like we could even either, I'm thinking either lean against the wall for yeah. the... Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. What are your guys' names? I'm Sue. And I'm Simon. Anything that you guys have to say about yourself? Uh, I'm, uh, we're Canadian, originally from Madagascar, and he is from Quebec. I am. Uh, crazy French Canadians looking for happiness. We found it. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> How long have you guys been in Ecuador? You start. I start. Seven years. Seven uh, years? Yeah. Is it eight years? Yeah, I think it's eight years because we traveled for like almost a year and a half to find the farm. And then, yeah, we have the farm since. It's going to be seven years in August. Yes. Yeah. So with that, you guys have a permaculture slash yoga farm here in Ecuador, right? That's correct. Exactly. What made you guys want to start that? I'll start. <laughs> yeah. Start. Okay. Uh, I was really looking for nature and some sun, to be honest. So uh, Ecuador sounded like a good place for that. And Simon was always a nature lover. And I needed the forest. I, yeah, I needed to grow my own food, even though I didn't know anything about it. And it had to be south because of the uh, tropical Needs. climate. Yeah, mm. <laughs> Simon is not happy in Canada. <laughs> too cold, too dark too there. Too cold, too dark, too mm. snowy. And here Very it's, gray. it's beachy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of green, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, so how long have you guys been involved in permaculture or yoga in general? Has it just been the time that you've been here on the farm? Is that when you started? Mm, I guess it's a bit more complicated, but... Uh, you started yoga in India. Yeah, like I, I really was doing yoga before her. And ironically, she's the yoga teacher now. <laughs> um, I had a pretty decent practice before I met her <laughs> and and yeah I, in, in terms of permaculture I dabble uh, since India and yeah I just I'm just passionate about learning and having a farm was just the best way to really experiment it to uh, a different different level but we're still learning you're the yoga teacher since I started yoga when I was pregnant oh, and wow. then I never stopped that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been beneficial for you? Cannot live without it. Oh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. There. <laughs> blue sky. Okay, so I'll put my shoes on, uh, mm -hmm. them down here. <laughs> so speaking of your guys' farm, where are we actually located right now? We are in Ecuador, Manabi, uh, on the coast, next to the Pacific Ocean. Um, in 15 kilometers from Kanoa, which is a little uh, fish town. And we're in the countryside. The name of this city, the Kese city? No, uh, it's uh, Tabuchila, the village. The village. <laughs> village. <laughs> the city. It's not a city. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Tabuchila. Yeah. What's the name of this farm? Finca Pinguino. Finca Pinguino. What inspired the name to Finca Pinguino? Ah. You want to tell the story? The yeah, short story? the short story. Yeah. So His mind is long. Pinguino is a little nickname that Simon had for me a long time ago, and we just kept it and decided to call our farm that. Awesome. What do you two enjoy about living in Ecuador? Or was there some particular reason you guys chose Ecuador? Uh, we, we shopped for a couple of countries, and we ended up in Ecuador because um, of the visa situation mainly, and the, like the uh, opportunities that you have here um, the Spanish language was uh, pretty important too very accessible to us and um, Ecuador is the is, climate yeah it's great like there's multiple climates for everyone and it's you can go from the beach to the Amazon going through the Andes mountain in one day it, it's pretty fantastic it's very small so kind of contained but lots of uh, microclimates as well. Its biodiversity is incredible and um, yeah there's beautiful people here. Would you say it's a good place to start a farm? Oh yeah. To start a farm? Uh, it yeah. would be bad to say no to <laughs> yeah. a Start a farm, start a family yeah. yeah, and have a lot of animals. You can try a lot, you can try a lot, make mistakes, 
fail a lot. <laughs> and the consequences are, are, are not as harsh as other countries, let's say it like that. Yeah, because you always have food, like stuff grows so fast here. Then, like, worse comes to worse, we, we had a couple of obstacles on the way and we always had food. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we couldn't do that in the winter in Quebec. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good for that. Nice. Yeah. Do you guys have something, uh, like a favorite thing you've enjoyed about living here on the farm for the last seven years? Fresh food yeah. and animals. Like, Want a horse? Let's get a horse. <laughs> yeah. Another cat? Yeah. Let's get another cat. Pigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chickens. Stuff like that. You guys have experimented with quite a few different animals then? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Is there any animal that you would suggest having to first time farm owners? Mm. I'd Chickens. say chickens. 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 Yeah. yeah. They're pretty great. You gotta <laughs> you gotta find the system, and uh, they can be a pain sometimes. But yeah, the eggs, uh, the meat for whoever needs it. Uh, they make fantastic compost. Uh, yeah. They represent the circle of life. Yeah, absolutely. They eat yes. our food scrap, and then they are happy with that. And then they provide eggs, and then we eat the eggs, and then again circle of life, and then they do chicks, and we we give, they give, we receive, they receive. Eventually, like you eat them. Yeah. No, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't, but uh, whoever needs to, yeah. yeah, it's it's a great system. What else do you guys have here on the farm? Horses. We have four horses. Nice. Uh, just because one is not enough. <laughs> and uh, four dogs. One for each volunteers. Yeah, literally. Uh, <laughs> two cats. cats yeah. Two, yeah, three. Depends on the days. Many, many chickens. Uh, Twenty. 20 chickens and then there's the wildlife there's the like two kids right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was not qualifying them as wildlife but yeah <laughs> i guess they are a little bit <laughs> yes is there anything that grows here particularly well in your region of ecuador uh, everything everything yeah except from the the temperate climate stuff it's it's a harder uh for animals per like particularly but like, can you name some uh, well, bananas, uh, uh, you papayas, know, papayas, sweet potatoes, mangoes, yuca, mm, limes, yeah, spinach, uh, bananas, like, quite a few all, things. Then, all yeah. citrus <laughs> yeah. related plantains. Yeah, awesome. It sounds like you guys can grow quite a few things here pretty easily. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very awesome. Do you have any suggestions for someone perhaps looking for land or to start something similar in either South America or Ecuador? You got that one. A plan. And we're not great planners, but a plan, a personal plan and a business plan, just so you have an idea where to start for the next month, one year and five years. Mm. And it will change, that's totally normal. Mm. But at least you have a plan to where to put your money because it, you wanna go and follow your dream, but sometimes you f forget about the practical, like clothes, you know, and <laughs> yeah. buy food because you still need to buy stuff at the beginning. True. Yeah, family is really important too. If like whoever wants the family, like the education is is uh, like one of the main thing, and it, it's a it's a bit harder here in Kanoa, but like figuring it out beforehand as much as you can, so so you know like what you're looking for. Uh, to raise your kids. We knew that a farm was the most important thing for our kids. Um, but then, yeah, there's like formal education that sometimes <laughs> is needed. Like a little bit of structure. Some, maybe? some, yeah. like a, something, yes. So you don't, <laughs> you don't raise monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so you two have two children then here that you've been raising on the farm? Yes. Monkeys, yeah. yes. <laughs> How old are they? Uh, six years old and a She's year and a half. Yeah. Yes. How was your experience buying land here in Ecuador? So we started uh, traveling the country by bus and um, kind of looking in small towns for ads, but there were not many of those and it was kind of lots of work. We did some volunteering as well, some uh, workaways and woofing. And then, uh, but it, it was hard to find land doing that. We were learning, but to find land, yeah, you just but have to go do hard. it. Yeah. At least you know if that's what you really want because the dream the, the ideal is there but if you don't know and if you don't have your hands in dirt you don't really know 
that's what you really want. Yeah, that but then the, yeah, true. the game changer was the motorcycle, really. Yes. Um, I uh, never drove one before, and it was quite an experience to learn, but <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I was able to travel a couple hundred kilometers a day and visiting small villages and meeting the people directly and asking uh-huh. them, you know, if they were s- anyone was selling land, and that's how we saw, yeah, we visited a couple, like, dozens um, l- l- properties and then ended up on this one ironically we started and ended in Kanoa. i think the language is important oh, if yeah. you want to go deep into the culture so learn spanish if you go to ecuador did you guys not know spanish when you came ah, here <laughs> i was a very strict teacher with simon yeah. <laughs> so i knew spanish and he learned really really fast we, oh. uh, <laughs> basically she pushed me uh, she asked questions to people and then disappeared <laughs> that was her technique and it worked pretty good <laughs> How much land do you guys actually have here to work with? Uh, we have el- 11 hectares, which is uh, which is way too big for us, but uh, <laughs> very small in the reforestation effort. Uh, that's why we want to connect with as many neighbors as possible. With your farm, do you have? Would you say it's easy enough, or would you think that it's wise for mm-hmm. anyone to start a business, an expat to start a business here in Ecuador? Uh. Do your research, maybe not deep research, but at least look what people are interested in because mm. something that is interesting in Canada might not be interesting here. So Very do your true. research, but so many opportunities in Ecuador for expats for... You think so? Yeah, I believe, I, I truly believe like there's an open mindness to North American stuff that you can bring and people will be attracted to that. Mm-hmm. So I guess jumping off of that, how have you guys felt that you've been received here? Because here you are in pretty rural Ecuador here in Tabochila. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the locals have received you guys pretty well? Have you noticed any hostility or has everybody been pretty nice? I, I, we, we always knew, we traveled quite a bit, so we knew we had to make the best, um, our best efforts to really connect with people. And, and there's always going to be people that are jealous, but we're trying to like keep it uh, uh, you know leveled with the people and we did our research we met the neighbors bef- like before buying wow. we asked them what they were thinking of you know expats or uh, foreigners moving uh, and doing like setting up shop here and <laughs> uh, we have a pretty good relationship with our direct neighbors and I think is a, this is the most important thing of all we found our Pat- Patricio as well uh, which is the main guy on the farm like we found him right from the beginning and I, I think that's that's one of the things I tell anyone that uh, comes in contact with us like find your Patricio you got to find that guy um, or woman that uh, you can rely on, that you can, you know, um, really trust. Trust. Maybe ask questions, Absolutely. any of the important questions too. Yeah. When you bought the land, was it just raw land? Was there anything on it? And how was building? Mm-hmm. If so. You mean, how was, uh, like, was there a building? Was there a house already that you moved mm-hmm. into onto the land? Because obviously that affects price and whatnot. I'm assuming that raw land is obviously the cheapest to buy with no development most of the time. Yeah, arguably, yes, but um, oftentimes um, this is a challenge as well. You're going to have a fantastic land with a terrible house on it and they, they still want to charge you more because they built the house and paid for the house. Uh, when I say terrible, I don't mean nope. badly, like badly designed is just not really always pretty hmm. um, like cement houses. Yeah, like an old cement house yeah but if there's a house it means there's electricity Ah. there's kind of a water system sometimes and you know that the weather at that place will be uh livable because you're not in a hill somewhere where it is going to flood so maybe the house is not perfect but at least you have some infrastructures that's exactly like you that's exactly what we had right like Mm -hmm. we had so the volunteer house changed so many times and it was originally our house and there was only one electricity plug in there <laughs> and we shared a pump and a well with two neighbors oh, wow. uh, but at least there was something at least there was something to start with electricity we, is important yeah. even if you want to go susta- um, um, uh, renewable energy yeah, yeah. after because you still need tools to build True. and then mm. you can remove your electricity after but mm. what you're going to build with if you don't have anything you need to bring the generator all the time so you need to think about your uh, 
infrastructure. Yeah, yeah it's pretty important. If you want to go off the grid, then at least you have that. Yeah. yeah start with grid and then go off. Mm -hmm. it. Where are you guys currently getting your water? We have a well. Yeah. We uh, digged a well, and this is money you need to plan in advance because it's mm. quite expensive. Mm. I think it was the most expensive thing we did, apart from buying land, is to dig a well. And they're not always guaranteed, right? Yeah. 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 So they guarantee yeah. the digging, they don't yeah. guarantee the water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But they guarantee that you, you have to pay them. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that building a home, if you buy raw land, is easy enough or something that's feasible? Or would you suggest buying something that has something on it already then, like you were saying? Sometimes uh. renovations can be more costly than, than than building a new home. But at the same time, if you don't have anything to start, we we know, we know people that just went and built in tents. Depends so they, where you are in life. They're months yeah. in tents yeah. and they just build their house. And if you have the house and the roof, it's it's, it's a good start. And then it can become a volunteer house. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, true. So yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. So um, with that, you guys host volunteers then. Yes, we, we do. do. You guys find volunteers on all sorts of websites, right? Right now, we're mainly on Workaway, uh, but and yeah, Instagram. Um, and Instagram, yeah, yeah like Instagram. we have a lot of people contacting Asking us them. through Instagram. Finca Pinguino Farm, yeah, at Instagram. That's yeah. correct. <laughs> I think volunteers have been uh, the rock for our projects, really, apart from our family, of course. Uh, without volunteers, we, we wouldn't have achieved what, what we are... Um, they bring the energy. Yeah. Because yeah. there's just that much limit where me and Simon can uh, motivate each other, you know, <laughs> and to have people... Motivate great yourselves, people, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great people that brings energy and new ideas. I think that's the best way to have a nice project. It's sometimes a, a, it's a lot of work to find the right volunteers, but it's it's a hundred fifty percent worth it. Yeah, like we meet people beforehand, and then we just it works every time. Yes, we're so lucky. In our project was to create jobs, so it's the volunteers should not be doing the jobs that locals can do. Uh, mm. And and this is uh, we can't hire as many people as we would like. But if we can create ten jobs in in ten years, we would be very very happy. So we have a couple of people working, and every every year we can add uh, like maybe one person to the project and it's all people from the community so it's fantastic is there something that you haven't liked about or what's the worst thing or if you could potentially complain about one thing from having lived on the farm for all this time is there anything you cannot be lazy yeah yeah at all which is great it's tiring but it's very tiring if one is not motivated yeah, the other one has to motivate so it's nice to have a team but you cannot be lazy and sometimes you really just want to lay and watch a movie. You guys have a pretty big reforestation thing going on here, right? Yes. Uh, big, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's as big as it can be. Uh, <laughs> it's thanks just to getting the bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you would suggest to any volunteers looking to come out here and stay with you guys? Uh, just contact us. Yes, yeah? contact us. Where's the best way to contact you at? Uh, go on our website. Yeah. Uh, send us or on Facebook. Work away. Work away. Instagram. There's many places. Many yeah. platforms. And Finca Pinguino is what you're called on all of them. FincaPinguino.com. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, link okay. in description. Link in description. Thumbs up. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so one of the last things before we finish up, is there any way that our supporters or anyone that wants to can support you guys, help out, or join in any way? Sure. Um, if you can't travel, we have a program that's uh, called Adopt a Tree. Uh, this is a very endangered, um, you know, uh, climate, uh, the dry tropical forest. So what we do is we uh, either uh, plant or um, conserve, like protect trees, uh, either on the farm or from the neighbors. Uh, so you can adopt uh, trees like Palo Santo, Saibo, So Guayacan, and um, yeah, it's a great way to help. Um, other than that, volunteering, of course, and uh, share our stories. Thank you guys for Thank being you. here with us today. Thank you for letting us interview you. It's Thank been you. really awesome. We appreciate it once again. And thank you for everyone watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for the channel to help out us and help out beautiful farmers like these two right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Caleb. <laughs> thank you, Shay. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Bye. Like and subscribe. Bye.